What's up folks? Welcome to a test recording of my Minecraft world. See how well this PC can handle playing Minecraft and recording at the same time. I'm going to introduce you to my go-to world. Uh, I've played Minecraft for probably about two, three years now. Uh, don't quite exactly remember, but this is the world I always keep coming back to. This is the first world I started playing in, and I've done, uh, I guess you could say, some significant building and exploration in it. Uh, you can see here this block with a torch on it. This is my spawn point. Uh, I was able to find it again using the compass and using a suggestion that I read online when I began playing I decided to dig a hole in the ground or in my case I was lucky enough to find a small cave and uh, this is it this is where I spent my first night uh, after I spent my first night here I walled it up and later discovered I was having a problem with zombies spawning inside here uh, I came back to it later opened it up torched it and now zombies don't spawn in here. After my first night, I moved further north in this direction and found a much better suitable cave, which was here. Um, the strategy of building a cave, or digging a hole and moving into it, or a cave, uh, worked pretty well for me, but uh, in my case, I never really moved out. Welcome to my home. Uh, the original build extended to about here and I later decided to expand it out a little bit further. Here we have my workshop and kitchen area. Right around the corner here we have a bedroom. It's actually fairly nice if I do say so. Uh, when I first started playing things like enchanting and uh, potion making I wasn't entirely exactly sure if things might uh, occur with future upgrades as to whether things might come out. So here I have my enchanting room, which is a solo room off all by itself, complete with a lockable door. Never really knew if any spirits might pop out during enchanting. Uh, more on that later. Here we have my potion brewing room, rather well appointed, complete with everything a vanilla potion brewer might need. Around the corner I have a overflow stock area for mostly weapons, most of these are actually empty, I think only the first three of these actually have anything in them. simple skylight. Most of my builds tend to follow a similar plan, a similar floor layout with a room that is four blocks high and similar sorts of design features. Here we have a tower, we'll go up to that later. This is the entrance down into my mines. Uh, never open both doors. You can see here I have a system set up to keep any rude dudes down below where they belong. Now, on the subject of things coming out, when I first started playing it was approximately the 1.2-ish update of Minecraft, so when I decided I was going to build a nether portal and build it under my own base, I decided that I should probably keep it separate. Here we have some supplies for going into the nether, and I here I have an automatic isolation door that uh, anything that happens to spawn in here is kept out. Now, as I said, I started playing during 1.2-ish, I don't recall the exact uh, version, but as it turns out in a later update, zombie pigmen could then start spawning around nether portals. So it turns out that this was actually a good idea to keep them in here should they happen to spawn. I took a Stargate sort of approach to the design of this room. It originally had isolation doors here. Um, 
which actually proved to be somewhat useless as the zombie pigmen could actually spawn regardless of the doors. And as you'll see later, the doors would actually prevent me from re-entering my base should I happen to re-enter it from a different area. Here, during one of my big expansions further north, uh, we'll probably visit that later, I needed a lot of stone, specifically stone brick. So I built a foundry in order to reforge cobblestone back into solid stone. I uh, found this design suggestion eh, probably somewhere online. And here we have a source chest for cobblestone, a chest for coal, both of which feed into a furnace, and then the finished product drops out through this hopper into here. And you can see that I still have a bit of stone that needs to be collecting and then reforged into stone brick. Here we have a nether wart farm that I built. Once ne nether wart started to grow in the overworld. It wasn't necessary for it to be grown in the nether. Uh, when I originally first built it, I wasn't sure if nether wart would actually grow in light or if it needed darkness, so I built this illumination system in order to be able to turn the lights off inside. Turns out I didn't need it, and rude dude spawning in here turned out to be a bit of a problem, especially the creepers blowing up my farm here. There's the portal room again. Here we can see the rail system that goes to my quarry. I'll probably visit that a bit later. While I was expanding my base, I discovered that this here decided to turn it into a nice indoor underground pool. Not that it really serves any actual function, but it looks nice. Here's the ground floor of the foundry room. And up there's the base floor of the portal room. There's nothing really f much further down from here. Yeah, there's the portal. You can hear it there. I built this all the way down, if I'm not mistaken, all the way down to basement level 4. But there's actually nothing down here to see. Yeah, it's largely unfinished. Vertigo warning for those that may be subject to motion sickness. I'm sorry about that. Uh, here we can see basement level 1. As I expanded south, I ran into, or under rather, the desert that my base wound up being near. And here we are back on the first floor. Oh dear, night is falling. Let's go take a look up on the watchtower. Again, vertigo warning for those that may be subject to motion sickness. This staircase is pretty tight. My design aesthetic as I began playing this game a little bit more changed a bit, and subsequent towers I built at outposts got a little bit larger. Instead of a single wide staircase, I started building them double wide with a 3x3 three three core center pillar, if you will. Now this will be as much of a exploration of discovery for me as well as anybody that might happen to watch this should I bother to upload this to YouTube because I haven't played this world in actually forever. This is uh, my first ex excursion back into Minecraft in uh, quite a long time here. 
So here we are looking. I don't believe that's west. Uh, you can see right there. There's my original spawn point. It's my farm. Uh, we'll visit it later, but over here I have my livestock farms. There's a barn I built for horses. I spent a good several hours building that, for which I never bothered to actually go get any horses to stable there. Uh, another expansion there. A bit further south, the guest housing area. Um, even though this world has never been opened as such, I've always held in mind the idea to build this world as a potential multiplayer world. And regions that I've built, I've named uh, with inspiration from various uh, fantasy settings, fantasy novels and such. Um, for example, this area here, my home itself and the region around it, I call Underhill, which you may recall as being the pseudonym that Frodo Baggins chose when he left the Shire. Here we have a bit of a helipad with a, a redstone circuit. Again, many things that I've built in here have no actual use or function other than looking really cool. Uh, potentially usable for uh, use with mods should they include things like airships, which you know, some do now. There we have an archery range that I built with targets every 10 meters here out to 50 meters which is the usual range even at 50 meters is a little bit extreme a little bit far but uh, this usual engagement range for archery uh, there we have a 100 meter target challenge um, you can see here the firing line for the 10 through 50 meter and a firing line for 100 meters uh, I don't recall if I've ever actually really hit that target, even though I put it out there myself. Um, you can see here the roads heading south, and this tree-lined one here heading west, and there's another one there heading east. No, that's north. This is east. Uh, one of the many things that I do is tame, I guess you could say, the wilderness. And... Let's see if the view is any better from up here. I have the draw distance right now dialed back to 12 chunks. Uh, my computer was rendering 32 just fine, but it was experiencing a strange bit of lag in that it wouldn't activate pressure plates and buttons and switches for some odd reason and everything else seemed to be fine. I'm going to experiment with that again sometime in the near future to see if updating Java has actually had any effect. You see here the beacon that marks the I suppose you could say center of Underhill makes it a lot easier to be able to find my way home. And if I'm not mistaken, the original version of Minecraft in which I started building, the top of this is pretty close to uh, max build height. Uh, I, I don't quite recall. Oh, entering some clouds. If you can't tell already, if, uh, if for the curious, the texture pack that I'm using is Spax. I don't recall which version of it it is, but it is the 128 by 128 version. Let's head back downstairs. We'll go tour the farms. And here we are on the ground floor again. You know what, let's take a quick nap so we can get some daylight. And there we go. Wakey, wakey. 
you know, you can see here that I have clocks, uh, not quite everywhere, but I have one over my crafting and workstation, and I have one on the door here heading out, and as well as one on my person down there in my hot bar. Um, being caught out at sunset has been a minor problem for me in the past. Here we have my farms. Wheat, potatoes, carrots, sugar cane, pumpkins, melons, and of course cocoa. Here's my horse's stable. No horses, but uh, ready for horses should I ever decide to bother to go get any. Let's see if I can hit that sucker from here. Nope. Oh. Oh, wait. And he's gone. No stable is complete without a loft. And here we have one complete with some hay bales and some of the materials that are left over from the build. Multiple stables. Stable stalls, rather. Here, this line of stone is actually a bit of a build error, I suppose you could say, from when I built my train line to go to my quarries. Turns out I didn't quite build it deep enough. The train line from my home here, heading north that way, to a location I've decided to call Scar Canyon. Turns out to have been rather close to the surface. Here we have my birch tree farm. It's been rather prolific and uh, quite sufficient to provide me with birch wood. It's my chicken farm, which I don't bother with anymore actually. Here we have my sheep and of course cows which provide me with raw beef to make steak. And of course no farm is complete without pigs. Hey piggies. Here we have the entrance to Scar Canyon. They bridge over it. This road heads to a, another region of my world that I've decided to call Riverton. We'll see that later. And here we go. The quarrying here in Scar Canyon has actually largely been just stone. Uh, it's somewhat, I'll admit, mineral poor. There haven't, hasn't been much in the way of any, really, uh, minerals here. A bit of iron here and there and some coal, not really a whole lot. But it has been rather useful in providing me with stone for my builds in other regions of this world. Here we have a train system. This track here actually leads back to the Underhill uh, keep or house, if you will. This train line here actually extends east into another network of tunnels and caves and ravines that I discovered a bit further east from here. Alright, let's head back up. This direction here, we'll visit that later. Probably, maybe. That is a, another town, ship, parish, county, region, call it what you will. 
of my world that I've decided to call Sky Tree. It was the very first jungle that I found uh, in which I've built a of course with jungle trees you have to build a uh, you have to build a tree house. Oh, here we have uh, my spruce farm. Forgot all about this. Right next to my pig pen and across from my sheep and chickens. Don't use spruce quite as much as I do birch. I kind of prefer birch, as you can see by my stables. Though I did use spruce slabs here for the roof. Oh dear, I can't sprint because I'm hungry. Pardon me, everyone. I'm going to have a bite. There we go. Now, Underhill Halls. There we go, and Underhill Guest Housing. Let's take a quick peek there. Kind of built this place on a bored whim. Just, uh, just for fun. Again, as I mentioned previously, a lot of the design choices and architectural planning for this world kind of always had in mind a multiplayer element, even though this world had never has been uploaded and played by more than one person. Now, guest housing here is, by and large, mostly unfinished. Uh, I do believe there's only one, maybe two rooms. I haven't actually been over here or up here and probably a year and a half, to be honest. I believe this might actually be the only apartment that I have. Two furnaces, workbench, two chests, nice balcony overlooking, I guess you could call it a valley, looking to the north. Now, we're going to head over to Underhill Landing. Now, before I decided to use the Nether for a transportation system, what I did was travel by river. And I made several canals, built several canals, tunnels, widening rivers, and even in some cases building uh, a canal from scratch over some fair distances in order to facilitate uh, movement around this world. I've since then built a somewhat extensive transport and subway system in the nether itself, which we will visit now. Again, in keeping with the taming of the wilderness, I have established a fairly significant foothold in the nether. Still a dangerous place, don't get me wrong, but transport through the nether has actually been made, uh, I guess you could say, safer? Oh, here we have a map of my region here. Uh, of course, uh, indicated by the green cursor. That is where we are now. So my farms. There's the horse barn. The birch farm. Chickens, sheep, cows. Here is Underhill Landing. Here is that road we walked down previously, Scar Canyon, and the town of Riverton. And to the south here, we may visit that later, is another region I've named South Lake. It's a lake of uh, fair size with an island on it and several 
large jungle trees, which I've built a, another tree house in. Now, I haven't yet, though I may sometime soon. I need to test to see if the distance away from here is far enough for me to be able to add it to the transport system. As you know, you have to be, I believe it is 128 blocks away for a portal to the nether to be a new and separate and distinct portal from the one at which you enter. I have a castle n east of here, which I've built a... uh-oh. Trouble with the rude dudes. Oh, there we go. This castle or keep that I've built east of here, turns out, wasn't far enough away for a portal to be separate and distinct, so essentially it is a one-way trip. There is a portal, and it brings you here, of course, but when you travel back through here, it takes you to Underhill and not to the castle, which I've named Weathertop. And we'll visit that later. Here we have a foundry for netherrack brick. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. This was built, as you might have suspected, before the introduction of the hoppers. If I decide I need nether rack brick, or nether brick, again in the future, I will probably... Go away, I gave it the office! I will probably rebuild this automated with hoppers. Down here we have a train station. This first line here goes to the, as the sign would indicate, goes to the first nether fortress that I found. This goes to a, a desert temple. This goes to a series of islands that I've named, as you can tell, Atlantis. Another desert temple here. This is a set of hills that I've uh, largely undeveloped presently, but it is, uh, you might as well call it hollow. So I've decided to name it Warren Hills after Warren, Rabbit Warren's Fortress Rock. It's one of my as yet unfinished builds. And the Great Northern Fortress, which is one of the reasons I needed all of that stone brick. Extra empty lines here for future expansion. Extra door that leads nowhere. Rail line supplies. And another series of, also as yet, mostly unused. This is, as you can see, unused and unconnected. There's nothing yet built there. But here we have the Eastern Frontier. Built this line very specifically for the update that changed the world when the number of biomes tripled didn't want to start a new world, so what I did is here in the nether, on this line, built about a thousand blocks east, built a, another portal, and started a small outpost development there. Here we have more expansion potential, and it goes down another three or four more floors as yet somewhat incomplete. There is access to the base floor there. All right, let's take a peek outside and see what we can see. Mm. 
Here's the top of my nether stronghold fortress. Initially when I first started building in here, the various locations around my world, like those you saw on the train line, I would actually travel to those on foot here in the nether. And these are the roads that connect them. When I later decided to build a subway system, the train line itself would actually follow those roads. There you can see that is the as yet unfinished line to the northern frontier. And the eastern frontier heads in that direction there. There we go, the Underhill Portal Hub. I very quickly discovered that all of my signs here in the nether needed to be sheltered and protected because although ghasts cannot blow up cobblestone, they can do quite a number on the signs that you place as direction markers. Here's another view. My nether transit hub. Fortress Rock in that direction. Here's a little safe room I decided to build just in case I decided to want to do something stupid and make the zombie pigmen angry. Another one of the footpath roads to the many locations around my world. And there in the distance you can see the part of the transit system that connects them all by rail. Out of the way, dude. Move it. Well, folks, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Keep this file size relatively small. Looks like I've been recording for about a half of an hour. I don't even know if I'm going to release this. But if I do and you're watching this on YouTube, go down below. You know what you do. But I'll say it anyway. Rate, comment, subscribe, like, dislike. And like I said, if anybody watches this, tell you what. Comment where you'd like to see me go next. You saw down below the different locations. You can back it up in the video and take a look again. See what uh, regions you'd like me to go explore for you. Um, until, the, uh, until next time, thanks folks. And I appreciate it.